so out here with the mustang and i know i don't make many videos on it because quite frankly the videos don't do very well so oversaturated with mustangs on the internet on youtube so that's kind of the main reason but i do drive this car a ton i drive it every chance i get multiple multiple times during the week pretty much anywhere i drive at nighttime i take it we go any semi-distant places I always take the mustang and stuff it's just a more fun car vehicle to drive i absolutely love driving it everywhere totally totally still in love with this car so don't think because i don't post much about it that it's gone or i don't like it or whatever i absolutely love this car to death but it just doesn't do good on my youtube channel so that's why i typically don't really have the motivation to make videos on it i know i need to i need to just pop one in maybe once a week or whatever just to break up the truck content and i'm gonna try to do that so i do get a lot of questions about the car and so i'm gonna just spend this video going over what i have done to it because i do have a lot of questions about what's done to it how you like this how you like that so let's flip the camera around and check out the car all right so for anyone that's new this is my 2017 mustang gt 50 six speed manual it is grabber blue that was only an option in 2017 so if you're looking for a way to kind of be unique in the mustang crowd try to go with a 2017 grabber blue it's definitely a, i guess not it's not rare but it's definitely more rare than your black or white mustang running around so that's a pretty cool thing but anything that i'm about to list is going to be available on americanmuscle.com late model restoration lund racing or your local exhaust shop any of those places is going to have the parts that i have on here so it doesn't really matter where i got my front my parts from specifically they're all going to be about the same price some places do have some discount codes and whatnot, but they're pretty much all going to be the same. So just Google it. You'll be able to find each of each individual piece by what I call it if you want it for your car. So I guess we'll come up here to the front, start off there. So up front, I actually like the stock grills in this car. I uh, hate them on the previous gens, but they don't really bother me on this one. I don't even know if y'all can see it. Hopefully, y'all can. The car is filthy right now, so I do apologize for that. But it rains pretty much every single day, scattered showers and whatnot, so it stays dirty for for this time of the year. So, plastic dipped the front pony, that's a given. I don't like the open grills, they just expose the radiator, and that's why I didn't like my 2014 with GT500 front and that grill on it, because it just looked like the grill was missing. So, I don't like that, I definitely do like the covered grill. So, those are stock, but the painted pony. Down here, we got this Cervini chin spoiler. And it's really dirty right now, but those aren't paint chips or anything. I actually hit a rabbit last night, and as bad as it is for me to say that, that stuff right there is doo-doo from, the, yeah, it dying. That's, I've hit two rabbits in this car at 60 miles an hour, and they both have managed to hit right there and get stuck because that, does, that little slit goes through underneath the bumper and between the, the chin spoiler. They both got stuck in there, both died, but it has sustained zero damage from that, and so... Definitely a very durable uh, chin spoiler, and I would definitely highly recommend it. So, love that. It gives it way more aggressive, that bottom bottom poking out rather than having an overbite. So, that's pretty much it for the front. So, the car is lowered on Eibach Sportline Springs. It's on the factory struts and shocks. So, you know, you can get plenty of miles out of the stock ones. Of course, you could probably get a better ride if you do upgrade those as well. But mine are on the stock ones. Gives you a nice drop car sitting a little higher than normal because it's literally completely out of gas so it usually is sitting pretty close to the tire as far as the fender goes but yeah so then we got the SVE S350 wheels and it's been a while since I had these I'm not gonna lie but I believe they are I know they're 19s but I believe the front is a 19 by 10 and the rear is a 19 by 11 I believe that is the setup I don't remember the back spacing they only come in one so it doesn't matter all right, so we got Nitto NT555 G2s on here, 285, 35, 19 in the front, and a 305, 35 in the back. It's a nice, grippy tire. For a street tire, they are miles and miles better than the first generation NT555. I had those on my old car. They were absolutely terrible, down, downright dangerous, and would not recommend them, but I would recommend these. They do get pretty good traction. This car has 331s, and it will, if it's a nice day out, it'll hook in first gear. So that's definitely really good. It is wide, but they are also pretty good, sticky-wise. 
Uh, they're not the best in the rain. I know it's a 305 in the back, so they definitely do sometimes try to hydroplane and can get a little sketchy. So whenever it's raining, you definitely want to calm down, take it easy so you don't end up in the ditch. The front calibers are painted. Uh, they're not an exact grabber blue, but since they're not side by side, they might look more of a different color on camera. But they are very close, and just looking at them, you wouldn't tell a difference. If they were side by side, you might could, but they don't look any different on here. So, front ones are blue, and then the rears, I have them black because this is just the base model, so it doesn't have any fancy brakes on or anything. So, I just opted to have these black because I didn't like the way they look blue. I do like the more sleek look with them being black. So, those are black. Um, we do have some. SR Performance, um, I can't remember what those are called, the upper, well, dadgum, uh, they're the link, the right there, you can see it, it's billet, and I'll put an annotation or whatever as I'm talking right now of what they're called, I can't remember what they are, but I do have them, they're supposed to help with wheel hop and stuff, and this car does not wheel hop much at all anymore, it was an absolute nightmare when it was stock, but it, those, those with the lowering springs as well, definitely helped it a lot so if we come up here we've got the roof wrap black got that locally done and I think it, it looks amazing it definitely breaks up the blue because this is a this is a blue car and you know if you have the blue roof it doesn't look bad but I think it definitely looks good with the black roof and it kind of gives it that glass glass roof effect you know that you could get on the last or the s197s um, and then I think it ties in good with all the other black stuff. So that's just a wrap, but it costs about $200, and I definitely would recommend it. It's pretty cool. So stock side skirts, glad Ford decided to put those on there. They look good. Um, these down here, which are covered in gravel right now, these are the RTR rear side splitters from the 2010 to 2014 models. And I took them and measured them and cut them, and I think they look great because on the base models, you don't really have much options for rear valance, unfortunately. The premiums have a lot better options, but we really don't have any because we don't have any tabs. You can't remove the factory when it's all one piece. So that definitely gives it the lower look, gives it that nice, I don't know how to say it, but yeah. So side markers are painted with VHT nightshades. Definitely don't want that orange and red. I only remember what color they were, but they were one of those. So we come here. This is the GT350 Track Pack replica spoiler, and I think it looks really good. I really wanted the MMD one, but I think it was just a little too short. If it came further out, more of a straighter angle, I would have got it. But uh, I opted for this one, obviously, and I do like it a lot. It definitely gives it a nice look. So if we come here on the rear, we've got some just some standard tail light tint from American Muscle. Definitely looks a lot better without that, you know, super bright red stock tail lights, and they're plenty, plenty bright. The GT badge is plastic dipped as well. Just gives it a more sleek look, makes it wider looking. Because when you have that chrome GT, it kind of you, you focus on the center and then it doesn't look as wide. So rather than buying the full deck lid you can just plastic dip that and it does help a lot so down here I just have the bottom part of the diffuser or the bottom part of the bumper plastic dipped it definitely I don't hate it when I actually like it pretty decent when it was blue but I do like the black it makes it look not I don't know I just like the black on the bottom of the bumpers of all Mustangs pretty much um, sometimes I guess it does look like it's missing <laughs> some of the pictures and stuff so that's kind of a negative but it does look good in person. We're down here to the Corsa Extremes, which are absolutely filthy. They're nasty yellow. I need to polish them up and stuff again. But it is a 3-inch Corsa Extreme cat back, and I do have the cats removed on this car. So it is extremely loud. It's probably one of the most hated exhaust setups on S550s in the Mustang community, Facebook pages and whatnot. It's kind of... The same thing as like having an off-road X-Pipe with Roush exhaust and Resonator Delete on your S197. I think both of those sound good. I think uh, you definitely have to hear these in person. 
video never does justice on exhaust but especially on these it just gives them a weird more higher pitch sound they do they do sound really good in person and i love it i've had a friend drive this and absolutely loved hearing it so no regrets on that it is insanely loud though so if you have neighbors that are close or um police that are a little picky on that might not be your best bet right, so we got the old p mass p moss whatever you want to call it cold air intake it sounds good looks good to me some people complain say it's ugly looking whatever i think it looks good it's a massive filter seems to do good i mean it's not something you're going to be like oh man i'm so much faster now with this or something like that but i do like it it is about time to get a new filter or clean this one um, your intake temps are definitely raised being as it's an open air filter rather than the stock box filter but it's not anything that i've dealt with it's been something negative or heat soak or whatever nothing i've ever experienced with it even though it is extremely hot i don't think you can really tell on a naturally aspirated car so yeah but that's all we got under the engine bay still got the stock prop rod i'm not really a car shower so it doesn't really matter rarely ever pop the hood on this thing so i guess it's time to go inside and talk about that all right so like i said base model car does have power seats some other little options like that but they are cloth i don't mind them i think they're comfy so if we go ahead and cut the power on got the standard gauges and everything standard little screen we do have an N gauge, so this is catless and it does have a PMOS, so I do have a Lun Racing tune in this car with the N gauge that can monitor a bunch of stuff, so I really like it, and the tune seems to be doing good because the car hasn't blown up, and it runs pretty good. Um, down here, we do have a genuine GT350. You get this CJ Pony Parts. They actually re-thread the factory GT350 shift knob, so it's not a dinky, off-brand, fake that tears up in a couple of days. So it's very sturdy, it's, it's been great, I've had it for a while. And we also have a Barton Hybrid 3 short throw shifter, so it's pretty good. It still does not cure some of the notchiness. My problem with my car was going from first to second. You would almost hit a fake, not a fake gear, but it would be like a small hang up before it would actually go into second. and. It definitely decreased it by a lot, but every now and then I do still feel it, but I haven't really missed any shifts when racing or driving real spirited or anything in this. So, and it is pretty short, like I said, so it's nice throws. They're not real heavy, slightly, you know, it is notchy, but it's not anything bad. So I do like it. It is on the pricey side. Install's not the most fun, but uh, yeah. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it does have 30% tint. Other than that, I think that's it. 5 badge badges, place it up. Now everything is coming out. <laughs> I can't swear. There might be some things I'm missing. I don't believe there is. Pretty basic, but it has got a fair amount of things done to it, and I think they all tie in very well together. The car does really well. I love driving it all the time. It definitely gets a lot of attraction, especially being as loud as it is. So you kind of got to keep that mindful when you're going around places because it if you have the windows up and stuff it doesn't seem as loud as it is but it's absolutely screaming outside so yeah that's pretty much it i'll probably put the gopro up and get a little bit of in driving stuff maybe talk about the car a little bit but aside from that y'all let me know what you think drop a comment if there's anything on here that you saw you really liked and that you're going to get and aside from that let's get to cruising Yeah. 
Force Extremes. It's wild, but it sounds freaking good. Y'all let me know what you want to see, and I'll make it. See y'all in the next one.